Stable structures are what we're building on this episode. Bridges, cups, pencils, blocks, boxes. They're all being built up and falling down. Plus, how stable can you make a structure using fruit as the base? Stay tuned to find out on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Get your hard outs out because today we're gonna be building things. Like I always say, what's the point of science if you can't use it to build cool stuff? And today's episode is called Stable Structures. Now, stables are the buildings where horses sleep. So, stable structures means... I think I have the wrong kind of stable. Today, we are going to be building a gumdrop dome. And gumdrops are already kind of dome-shaped, but they don't hold a lot of weight. Uh, yeah, can't hold much weight. But you can make it hold a lot of weight if you build a geodesic dome. A geodesic dome means a round shape made out of straight lines, and that's what I've made here. All I used is gumdrops and toothpicks. It's very easy to make, and I'll show you how to do it. First, you need to start with a pentagon, a five-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five. And then stick them all together, obviously, with toothpicks. Then what you want to do is you want to start making triangles. So you stick a toothpick in here and a toothpick in here, and then you put a gumdrop at the top of this triangle, just like this. And then you make another triangle here and here and here, and it becomes a whole bunch of triangles, you see? Easy to make as long as you start with a pentagon on the bottom. Now, once you've built one, I suggest you build two more because then you will have a stable base and you can see just how much weight these hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to you want to max it out? Okay. Let's max it out. Oh! Oh, a little collapsing. But still not bad for gumdrops, right? So there you go. The geodesic dome. That's what you research if you want to learn how to build one of these for yourself. But now, let's max this out even more. Okay, now I just need an expert to help me out. Do you like my new interface? It's good, right? Watch this. Hey, we, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not, okay. Uh, wait, no, that's not the right gesture for that. But there's, it's all gesture based, so I gotta, uh, this? Nope, uh, this? Nope. That? Ooh, okay. Um, expert. I want experts. Oh, 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 okay. It's voice activated. Great. Uh, oh, Sarah from Mad Science. She'd be perfect for this. Good. Close. 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 I can leave it running. Sarah? Mad Science, great oh, to see you. Thank you, great to be here. I like your lab coat, it's a really nice color. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's supposed to be yellow. I must have changed to orange in the portal. That's okay because I, this is not the first time that's happened, so I've installed a little uh, secret thing on the app that allowed me to get a new one from storage. Oh, Watch perfect. this. Huh, didn't work. Oh well, I'll get another one later. All right, <laughs> anyway, we are going to max out the geodesic dome. Amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, so we just want to make it bigger. So how do we do okay. that? Okay, well, there's a couple ways we could do that. Um, we could add a few more points of connection, change the shape of it, make mm -hmm. it a little more complex so it's a little bit bigger. Mm. Or we can use the design right now and use different materials to make it bigger. Ah, okay. Well, you know what? I think we should do both of those things. Okay. I think we should make it more complex and bigger. But why don't we start with bigger? Okay. But we'll use the simple, the simple design right here, and we'll just get, like, long wooden poles instead of toothpicks. Perfect, yeah. And then, um, what will we use for the gumdrop? I guess we can't get big gumdrops, huh? No, I don't think so. Um, what about, um, oranges? Huh? Ah, yeah, oranges could work. Maybe, yeah, because yeah. you could stick the poles in and then the oranges would be, okay. Yeah. Let's we'll go to the that. Science Max Fruit Market and we'll get some oranges. Perfect. And I'll get a yellow lab coat. I don't know why that didn't work. Is this a maxed out number of oranges? I think so. It's, or is it just a medium doubt number? We don't really need many <laughs> more oranges than this. No. So, uh, there we go. So we got our oranges. Those are going to be our gumdrops. And 
These wooden dowels will be our toothpicks. We just have to start with a pentagon, yes. right? Five sides. So why don't we just lay that out and see what Perfect. it looks like here. We start building this dome the same as the gumdrop dome. So, like this. We stick the dowels into the oranges to make our five-sided pentagon. Good, like that. And then we go up from there by making a few triangles and sticking the oranges on the tops. Oh. But because the oranges are heavy, the triangles are pretty wobbly. That is, until we get them all connected with cross pieces. Yeah. After that, it seems to hold up pretty well. Okay, let's see if it holds it up. Whoa! <laughs> That's exciting. That is very exciting. Uh, let's do the same thing. So you make a triangle here, I'll make a triangle there, okay. and then we'll connect them. Sounds good. Two layers, orange dome. I'm pretty excited about this. This is nice. Yeah. I'm surprised that the oranges actually hold it together because mm -hmm. oranges aren't really that strong. No, exactly. But the structure itself is really strong based on the design of it. Yeah, because it's it's all about the shapes, right? Exactly. And we're using lots of triangles today, which are one of the strongest shapes on Earth. Ooh, strong. Well, then making something out of a lot of triangles makes it really strong. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so let's make that top layer of right. things. We only need one more orange. Yeah. This will be the one, top layer. Right in the middle. One orange on top with five dowels from each point and... Yeah! So <laughs> orange juice high five. In fact, it worked so well, there's only one thing left to do. Hmm, is there a way that we can maybe max it out even more? Watermelon? Watermelon. watermelon. We yeah. could get the round watermelons. Have you yeah. ever seen those? They're like the size of a bowling ball or yeah. smaller, a little bit smaller? That's perfect. And they're nice and full inside, so they should be able to hold the uh, posts into place. OK, we'll try it one more time with watermelon. Inside dome, high five. Yeah! You may have heard of cup stacking, and if not, you're missing out because not only is it fun, but it's something that kids are the world record holders at. And it's all about, you guessed it, stacking cups. Now, I have learned the pattern, but I'm not super fast at it. The world record is actually four seconds, and this is what that looks like. but you can't use camera tricks to help you. You have to practice to get faster. Now, you don't need to use official sports stacking cups, but if you don't know your science, some things will work against you. First of all, these cups have holes in the bottom, which makes them not very good as, you know, cups. Why do they have holes in the bottom? Because of science. You see, when you pull the cups apart, there is air that needs to get inside this cup. If you don't have a hole, like these ones, the air makes them stick together because there's nowhere for the air to get in except for underneath, and they will stick. Once again, let's compare. Also, you want the cups to have some weight because if they have some weight, they'll fall out of each other easily. If they don't have any weight, like, say, these styrofoam cups, it becomes very difficult. And <sighs> cup stacking with trash cans. OK, here we go. Even though these trash cans were heavy, they didn't have holes in the bottom, which means they stuck together. A lot. So why didn't I drill holes in the bottom of these trash cans? OK, and then... Well, I needed them in episode six to make 11 barrels of slime. Uh, OK. Two. But I eventually did it. And time. OK, there you go. The world record in trash can stacking. I know it's, it doesn't seem very fast, but first of all, that was hard. And second of all, I am the only one to do it. So therefore, I hold the record. <sighs> Sarah and I have already made a great dome out of oranges. 
Now we're maxing it out even more, but this time using... Watermelons! Watermelons! But not the giant watermelons, nope. the perfect spherical watermelons. They'll have to do pretty good to be better than the oranges. Definitely. All right, so we just do it the same way? Same way. All right. Let's do it. I'm sure I'm not telling you something you don't know when I say watermelons aren't great for building structures. It's super wobbly. But the fact that we can make a structure using watermelons just proves how amazingly strong a geodesic dome really is. Have we done it? Yeah. We've done it! Yeah, watermelon dome! All right, we've got our gumdrop dome. We've got our orange dome. And we've got our, our watermelon. watermelon dome. Those, these are awesome max out domes. What do we want to do to max it out even further? I think the watermelons were a little too heavy. Maybe we should go back to something lighter. Uh, so we can make it out of gumdrops, which will be, yeah. like, more complex. Exactly. And we won't get orange juice raining on our heads all day, yep. which is what happens with this one. Max Historica. This is Leonardo da Vinci. Ciao. One of the greatest inventors to ever live. And this is a pile of wood. One of the greatest piles of wood to ever be piled. Now, Leonardo is going to construct a bridge out of this wood. This is Leonardo's hammer. One of the worst hammers in the history of hammers. Now, Leonardo must construct his bridge using no tools at all. N no, that hasn't been invented yet. How will Leonardo construct a bridge using no tools at all? Well, he is one of the greatest scientific minds. <laughs> oh, um, one of the greatest scientific minds in history. <gasps> oh, each piece of wood is supported by another. And that's what's known as Leonardo da Vinci's self supporting bridge. Leonardo's done it. But there is a flaw in the bridge. It's very strong when you apply downward force, but not so strong when you push on it sideways. Fortunately, Leonardo can devote his great mind to figuring out how to clean up his workshop. Ha-ha! <laughs> Join me, one of the greatest narrators in the history of narration, next time on More Max Historica. Let's recap. Sarah and I have maxed out our simple geodesic dome, but now it's time to make it even more maxed out. We need to increase how complex our structure is. So right over here, we actually have a dome that's just made out of triangles. Ooh, look it, it's nothing but, there's a triangle there, there's a triangle there, triangle there, triangle. So all triangles. All triangles. And see how much bigger it is even compared to our first one? Yeah. And that's just by adding more points. Over here, we have one that uses pentagons and triangles. Ooh, let me see, okay, so we got, uh, Oh, there's a pentagon there. Yep. There's a pentagon there. And then we got triangles here. Yep. Um, can we go bigger than this? Because this is good, but this is still not, this is not maxed out enough. Sarah had the idea of lengthening the poles. Tish kebab skewers, I love those. I use those all the time in my science experiments. And making a bunch of pieces that fit together. So we just make a whole bunch more of these. Yep. And then we'll make some sort of big dome. <laughs> this is awesome. So we maxed it out and it worked great but gumdrops started to become a little hard to work with. Every time I do one attachment, mm -hmm. another one comes apart. So I had to get inside to hold it up with my head. Hmm. I think I've got an idea. Oh, yeah? Be right back, yeah. Oh, okay, but should I get out or, or should I? It's okay, I can stay in. I could just keep fixing while it, it's collapsing a bit, but it's okay. Wait, this is inside. No, this is outside. Wait, hold on. Help, Sarah? Oh. Hey, oh, my. It kind of collapsed a little bit. Gumdrops, they just don't have the strength. Exactly. I was thinking we could use something a little more sturdy, maybe like some cardboard. Oh, yeah, and it doesn't move at all. We can totally make this. We'll max this out. I, I'll just put this over here. Okay, <laughs> fair right. enough. Okay. If you want to build a block tower, you might think the fastest way to do it is just by building a single stack of blocks. But science may have a few things to say about that, and those things would be no. Let's try it with books. The books are much wider than the blocks, so that will give me a wider base, right? 
but it's all about the center of mass. You compare how wide it is to how tall it is. Right now, it's pretty wide and it's not that tall, so the center of mass might be around here. But if you go high enough, how high it is compared to how wide it is changes a lot. It's getting higher, but not any wider. The center of mass is probably uh, right around there somewhere, which means it's gonna be really hard to balance that, whoa, care, careful, almost. I can do a little bit more, I bet. Whoa, careful, careful, whoa. It'll only get so tall. So there you go. You can never stack a single stack of anything very high. But just in case you don't believe me, let's max it out. Ah, ha, ha, oh, careful. Now it's time to see how high, whoa, whoa. How high I can make a single stack of boxes. Okay, and it, whoa, six boxes, six boxes, six boxes, whoa. Can he go as high as 12? Let us find out if I can go as high. Apparently not. Can he go as high as 11? Can he go as high as 11 boxes? Let's find out. Whoa, careful, 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 and... Ha-ha! A single stack of boxes! Huh. Okay, well, like I said, you can't stack a single stack of things too high, because it will, it will fall. Ha-ha! Science! 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 This is a pencil. You probably have one of these at home and use it for all kinds of interesting things like writing and drawing, and that may be it. But if you have a lot of pencils, you can build stuff. I'll show you some of my favorite pencil builds. Check this out. It's a pencil cube. If you wanna try building one yourself, you build it like this. Get a piece of foam and then lay out 11 pencils this way, and then another 11 that way, so they make a nice square. Then take sharpened pencils and stick them into the foam in all the gaps. Go all the way around and then keep adding more layers of pencils and eventually you will have a cube. Now, if you don't have 366 pencils at home, you can do the same thing with toothpicks. Now, if you wanna research this on your own to find the instructions, just try looking up pencil cube. Okay, that's not the only thing we can build with pencils. Check this out, a pencil asterisk. Phil, can you max it out and add some more pencils? Yeah, so I did. I maxed it out with even more pencils. And then I thought, well, could I max it out again? So I did. This is what it looks like with even more pencils. And in fact, I removed the inside pencils and the whole thing still stays together. And then, of course, this is the maximum number of pencils you can do with this configuration because, as you can see, it starts to become a sphere and you kind of run out of pencil length. There you go, maxed out pencil structures. Of course, I've used all of my pencils, but that's okay, I will buy some more. I will just write myself a note to buy more. Actually, there are sharpened pencils on the bottom of my pencil cube, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just write this note with the pencil cube. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, ready? One, two, three. And it's still standing! Oh, that one's not sharpened. Oh, here we go. Where'd my book go? Ooh, look at Sarah and I have maxed out a geodesic dome out of gumdrops oranges, watermelons, and more gumdrops. But now we're making one using glue and cardboard circles. Are those the same distance? After a bunch of time assembling and gluing, we have a giant maxed out dome. Okay, there, are we done? I think so. We're done? Yeah. Yeah! Max out dome, how many points do we have? Oh, so many. Can you, do you think we can lift it? I think so. I think so. that's yeah. the top, try it. See. Okay, whoa. Whoa! Wait, 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 we can spin it! It was really light and also really strong. Strong enough to hold upside down. As a fruit bowl, it'd be pretty good. This is so strong. I'm surprised at how 
strong this structure is. There you go, Science Max, experiments at large, geodesic dome, and now it's sort of a geodesic disco ball. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Whoa, 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 okay, careful. <laughs> careful, careful. All right, putting it down, putting it down. <laughs> this episode of Science Max is all about building things strong. Two. And let's do three. An arched bridge, giant house of cards, magical stacking books, and more. Oh, I thought they were gonna do it. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Oh, hello, Science Maximites. We've got a lot of work today, so I was just getting prepared. You know, taking something flimsy and making it strong, that's what scientists and engineers do every day. And it's also pretty fun. You take something that's not that strong, and by the way you build it or put it together or change its shape, it suddenly becomes a lot stronger than you think it was. So I thought that's what we should do today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We should build something. So we're gonna build an arched bridge, and we're gonna build it out of sugar cubes. <laughs> so here's what you need. You need some sugar cubes, you need some sandpaper, and you need some modeling clay. So first, you want to make some abutments out of your modeling clay. What is an abutment, you ask? It is this. They distribute the force laterally from one side or the other. I like to use this. This is half a roll of duct tape. And so it fits in just like that. And you see, it's a perfect arch. If you just take sugar cubes and you try to stack them into an arch, it's not going to work because the sugar cubes may not even fit all together and you can see only the bottoms are touching. I take up the guide and it all falls apart. So here's what you do. You take your sandpaper and you change the squares into trapezoids and you start sanding down your sugar cubes into trapezoids. Basically, you want one small side and one long side. Thin at the top, wide at the bottom. Or wide at the top, thin at the bottom. It's a trapezoid no matter which way you hold it. Put it on the bridge and see. And as you go, you will see if you're doing it right, there will be no gaps. If you go to the Science Max website, there will be a guide that you can use to help you make the sugar cube bridge so you don't have to spend as long as I did making this one. And then the most important part is the keystone. That's the one that fits in right at the top, just like that. And when it does, you can take away the guide and it stays up. Isn't that cool? It stays up without any glue, without any mortar, all based on the shape of these sugar cubes. The cool thing is, it'll hold the weight of a whole car, provided you have a very, very small car. The reason why it works is because the weight is distributed along the arch into the abutments and down into the ground. That's what makes an arch bridge so strong. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna max out an arch bridge. So I think I'm gonna need some help though. Uh, maybe Sonia from the Ontario Science Center. She really knows her stuff. Um, yeah, I'll go there and I'll see if she's busy. All right, come on, let's go. Sonia. Hey, Phil, how's it going? It's going good. I was wondering if you could give me a hand with something. Okay, what's I'm, up? I'm building, um, well, it's actually, it's easier if I show you. All right. Do you mind coming back to Science Max headquarters? We could take the portal. But that thing doesn't always work. Oh, it is fine. Well, I mean, that worked just fine. Uh-oh, it usually makes a beeping when I do, oh. It's out of batteries. Oh, I told myself, Phil, charge the, Charge the remote before you leave the lab, and then I... Where have you been? The, three, the, three, three. The remote ran out of battery, so I had to run the last three kilometers. Sorry. Right. Because I made own, it. Long story. So the sugar cube bridge. You had a chance to look at it, right? Uh -huh. This works on any scale, mm -hmm. right? It should, any no matter scale. what size arch, it should be the same, right? Definitely. Good, because what I want to do is use these abutments, but go to these abutments. Oh. So I'm gonna start the bridge here, and I've already created a thing that to we can use to put the, support? the sugar cubes on as we go up 
so that we can make sure that it becomes now, a Phil, perfect arch. Yeah. Do we have enough sugar for this? Yep. I got tons of sugar. Whoa. Yeah. So I think we're gonna need some glue because it's gonna be really hard to get these to stay. Yep. To stay, stay right on. there without a little bit of glue. We're gonna make a giant arch, maybe some walls, and, and we'll see what happens. Let's do it. Oops, uh, an egg. Now you might think of eggs as kind of flimsy and they do break pretty easily, but eggs, eggs are actually stronger than you think. It's because they're, well, egg shaped. You see, the top of the egg is like a little bit of an arch and the bottom of the egg is also like an arch and arches distribute the weight just like they do in a bridge. Here's how you can experiment with how strong eggs are. First, you want to get a pair of gloves to protect your hands from the shell just in case anything goes wrong. You should also tell an adult that you're doing this experiment because if it does go wrong, you're going to have some mess to explain. And also, you should probably put on some safety glasses. Now here's what you do. Take your egg and carefully put it in your palm just like that. And put it against your other palm and you're gonna push in directly on either side of the egg. Start pushing harder and harder. You can even lace your fingers and press even harder. And if you do it right, the egg won't break. Pretty amazing, right? So just how much weight does an egg hold? Can one egg support my entire weight. Let's find out. I'm gonna lift my weight up like this and lower myself down. And no, cannot hold my weight. Can my weight be supported by two eggs? Oh, nope. Phil's weight, four eggs. <laughs> Oh, I thought they were gonna do it. Nope. My weight on eight eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> My weight can be supported by just eight eggs. Science! <laughs> Ooh, careful. <laughs> Sonia and I are on a quest to make a maxed out sugar cube bridge. The reason why an arch works is because the weight or the load of whatever's on top of the bridge is carried outward along the curve of the arch to the abutments at each end, which carry the load and keep the ends of the bridge from spreading out. No matter what you build your bridge out of, sugar or stone, the science stays the same. Sonia and I are building a much larger bridge out of sugar cubes. We're using glue to help the sugar cubes stay together, just like stone bridges use mortar. And when we're finished, it was pretty impressive. A massive sugar cube bridge, yep. right? High fives for that. The moment of truth comes when we take out the support Ooh. and... Yeah! Yes. It works! Awesome. Okay. okay. Giant sugar cube bridge. So do you think it'll hold some weight? I think it definitely should, because right now we have an arch, mm -hmm. perfect arch, and the weight is being distributed to the sides of the base, so. So that's what it's for, right? It's, we can put weight on there? We can definitely put some weight. One to start? Let's start off with one. Okay. And let's see how it goes. All right. Here we go. All right. Yeah, one book, yeah. All right, Sugar Cube Bridge. One book. Two books. Are you nervous? Yeah! <laughs> sugar, books. Sugar Cube Bridge, three books. Three books. Oh, that was great. It, it held up three books. Three. Well, technically it held up two books and broke on the third. So it's kind of still far from how much weight we want to hold because we want to cross it. We definitely want to cross it, so that means we need something bigger and stronger. The cube yeah, works. You're right, because the cubes are great because that keeps the science the same. Yep. Right? So something cubular. The milk crate, really? Definitely. I think we should use those. It's a cube. It is a cube. A whole bunch of milk crates, and we'll see what we can do. I think that sounds great. Awesome. Whoa. This 
is a Prince Rupert's drop. It's a piece of glass that has a long snaky tail and a bulb at one end. So what's so interesting about a glass tadpole? Well, I'll show you. And remember, this is just glass. Oh, Prince Rupert's drops are very strong, almost as strong as steel. It's all in how they're made. Molten glass is dropped into cold water. What happens is the outer part of the drop cools off first, leaving the inner part still hot. When the inner part eventually cools, it contracts, pulling everything in tighter and tighter, keeping it under a lot of tension. And because it's round, the force you put on it is distributed all the way around, just like the force is distributed on an arched bridge. Until you get to the tail. Just the tiniest break in the tail, and it explodes. All that energy is released in a chain reaction. Why it's so strong you can hammer on one end, but explodes when you break the other, puzzled scientists for centuries. But now we know it's all in how it's made. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic and you will be granted entry. Send in the next applicant. <laughs> okay, don't let them see you, don't let them see you. Okay, magic smoke, and here we go, big entrance. Behold it is I, overwhelm You again. I only have to demonstrate magic one time and you have to let me into the Wizard Academy. And last, last time does not count. So prepare for your mind to be boggled and your eyes to also be boggled because I shall do a trick. I will just get to it. Here is a book, behold! And now, feast your stupefaction as I produce another book, ha ha! And then, two or three more times, behold, as I put, as I, that's good, behold! And now, look upon the wonderment as I stack these books on top of each other, like this. And now, feast more stupefaction as I, I cleverly move the books off the table. And now, now comes the magic word. Now, I say the magic word. The magic word! And behold, the book is levitating. It is completely off the table. I have done it. Magic. No. No? Not magic. That's science. But the book is levitating. No. Look at it. It's not even touching the table. No, it's being supported by the books below because of the center of mass. Preposterous. I'm afraid it's very posterous. Each book is balanced on the one below in a way that the center of mass is behind the edge of the book below. And the entire stack center of mass is behind the edge of the table. So it may look like magic, but it's science. So... I can't get into the Wizard Academy? No, I'm afraid not. I, uh, good... Alakazam! You will rule the day that Overwhelmo did not I will return, and then you will see... Oh, ow. Sony and I made a large bridge out of sugar cubes, and it didn't hold much weight. So now we're going to try making another arch bridge, but instead of sugar cubes, we're going to use milk crates. There we go. I've made some abutments out of giant crates, and this is where we're going to start our bridge, and they start there, and it goes in a big arch, but we're going to be using... I brought milk Milk crates, high fives, Woo! high fives. Two, so we start our bridge. This is a straight line, it's not, a, it's not an arch. It's not an arch. But it's clear we have a problem. Okay, ready? Ah! That didn't work, Phil. <laughs> we're like, it's like we're back to the beginning again. So this is like two straight lines. Two straight lines, it's yep. Like a triangle. We need an arch, so we're gonna need a support. Sony and I build a support to help us make a curve the milk crates can follow. But after we finish stacking, there's a problem. It doesn't look very solid. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Here. Oh, yeah. Because everything is, there's a gap at the top of all of them. Look, that one, there's a gap. There's a That's gap there. A, there's a big there's a one gap here. There. It's well, not I mean, making our bridge very solid. There's only one way to find out for sure. 
can try it. Is to pull this out and see if it stands up. Let's do it. Okay. So, didn't stay up. Didn't stay up. Okay. That's all right, though. I'm not sure why it isn't staying up. Like, the sugar cubes were cubes. Mm -hmm, that's a cube. Milk crates are cubes. But we did change the shape of the cube. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you remember, when I first built my sugar cube bridge, it didn't work with cubes. You have to sand the cubes down to make them into trapezoids. You can't build a perfect arch out of cubes. So they were tall, wider here and then narrower there so that they had... Oh, so that's the problem. Yep. So I could, like, cut it? I could cut it. I you could cut could. it. You could. I could cut it. That's going to take a long time, though. If we cut the milk crates into trapezoids, everything will work, right? Right? We take a milk crate and with the right safety gear, we cut it so we can reshape it into a trapezoid. Good. And it works, but... It's gonna take a long time, isn't it? Definitely. So uh. how about this? I have an idea. So remember when we did the experiment and we had lots of V gaps? Yeah. How about we put some wooden wedges into those gaps to make it one secure structure? So they, it was sitting like this. Exactly. So what we're gonna do is insert wooden pieces right here so we'll fill those gaps. I get it. And we'll make it one secure structure. Ah, okay. instead of cutting all of our milk crates, we can keep the milk crates. Yep. And they can be solid and we just add to it rather than take Taken away. Taken away, exactly. That is a smart idea. Okay, so let's make some wedges. All right. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let me guess, you want to build a strong structure, something that'll stand the test of time. Well, you know you got to use the right kind of shapes. Look at this, a square. Now, squares have got to be strong, right? Well, maybe. Maybe if you press straight down on it, but watch as I push to the side. Oh, no! The thing that I have built is now collapsing because squares aren't, in fact, strong after all. If only I had listened to Sal Sage advice. Yeah. Squares aren't gonna cut it. Fortunately, there's a shape that's strong in all kinds of ways. A triangle. Okay, so you heard of triangles before, good for you. But look at this. You can push down from the top and it doesn't move, or you can push from the side and it doesn't move. Triangles are awfully pointy. How do I build with them? Observe, ha <laughs> ha. Triangle here, triangle there, platform on top. And watch. <clears throat> No matter how I try to shift it, it stays solid. And check this out. Triangle here, second triangle there, and a third triangle shape here. That's like three triangles for the price of two. Huh? That's a good deal. So there you have it. The triangle. One of the greatest shapes to build with. This is a house of cards, and if you've never built a house of cards, you should definitely try. Try, because it's not easy. What you need to do is you need to make triangles with the cards. If you do it just right, ha ha, they'll stay up. Then you take another pair of cards, like that, and you take another card, and you put it on top. Ah, and it stays up. Keep on building by making triangles and putting another card across the top like a roof. Then, when you're ready, you can start to make a second layer. It takes a lot of patience to make a house of cards. But with enough patience and really steady hands, you might be able to finish it. There we go. Ha ha, a house of cards. Now, let's max it out. Shh, backing away slowly. Backing away slowly. To build our maxed out card house, the Science Max build team and I used large pieces of foam insulation, which were super light and easy to work with. Once we set up the first layer, we needed to bring in a scissor lift so we could keep building the next layers. By the time we got to the top, our card house was 10 meters tall. Yeah! Giant house of cards! And now that I've built a giant house of cards, what do I do with it? I knock it down. <laughs> Science! I'm gonna build it again. 
Sonia and I are rebuilding our milk crate bridge. Since cubes don't work if you're trying to make an arch, and changing the shape of each milk crate would take too long, we're using wooden wedges to fill the gaps at the top of the milk crates. Once we get the wedges in, the milk crates have support at their tops, and they make a perfect arch. Are you ready? I'm ready. All we have to do is pull the wooden thing out, and if it holds up on its own, we've done it. We pull out the support, and it stands. It works. The bridge supports itself. Now it's time for the final test. We try to walk on this bridge. So we spent some time making sure our bridge was safe. We added a crash mat and we built a second arch. We sure did. So that it's a little bit wider and it feels very solid. So the only thing to do now is to test it. Test it out. You gonna do it? I absolutely will. All right. Absolutely. Sonia puts on a helmet and gives it a try. And sure enough, it works. Yeah! yeah! Milk Crate Bridge! 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 Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Science Max experiments at large. Milk Crate Bridge! Yeah. for science! High five! High five! Uh, this episode of Science Max is all about earthquakes. Exciting! How do we build something that won't fall apart when shaken? Plus a lot of other ways to shake things or build things. Science! All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. <laughs> Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Today, we're going to be looking at earthquakes. Earthquakes. Huh. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something. <laughs> that was supposed to happen earlier. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake. Earthquakes happen when two plates on the Earth's surface rub together, and it causes the ground to shake. It causes the ground to shake. Sometimes it shakes a little, sometimes it shakes a lot. Chances are you do not live in a place that has earthquakes. But if you do, ask an adult what to do during an earthquake so you can be safe. Modern buildings that are built in earthquake zones are designed to withstand the shaking. But how do scientists and engineers build a building that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. First thing we have to do is simulate an earthquake. We're going to build a shaker table. And here's what you need. Two books that... Two books, four elastic bands, and four... four rubber balls. Oh, wait. Uh, okay, four, four rubber balls. All right, so the first thing you do is actually take your four elastic bands and wrap them around your books. Put one set on one side, one set on the other side until you have that. Then you take your four balls and you stick them in between the books in the middle-ish area, but you don't want to have them too close to the edges. And now two at the back. And ta-da, you've made your own shaker table. What are you shaking, you ask? I will show you. You build a tower, like this one here that I built out of building blocks. So here's what you do. You'll need your base to be securely attached to the shaker table. I use painter's tape because it'll come off again without harming the books. And what I want to find out is just how much shaking this tower can take before it falls apart. Ready? And there it goes. And when you've done that, what you do is you be a science maximite and you design another tower. And you tape it down to your shaker table and see if you can make this tower fall down in an earthquake. And if you built it really well, it probably won't. <laughs> but you don't have to just use building blocks. There's all kinds of other materials you can use. Check out this building which is really tall, and you'll see there's a cup at the top, and that's for a baseball. <laughs> Put it up at the top, and that means there's a weight up there, and then we shake it, and we see what happens. Oh, oh no, oh, there it goes. 
So that is what we're going to be doing today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We're gonna be making a giant shaker table and putting a giant structure on top and seeing how we design it to make sure it stands up to the shaking of an earthquake. I'm gonna need an expert to help me though. Um, oh, I know, Anne would be really good at this. Okay, all I need to do is get Anne and we can start. Oh, come on. There it is. All right. And I, uh, I feel weird. Why do I feel weird? I think you're a chair. Well, that's not good. Oh, hold on a second. Am I, am I good? Okay. Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Here's your lab coat. Thank you. So you're from Let's Talk Science, right? I am. All about science education, just like us. Today, I need your help to max out our earthquake table. This is the table this looks part, great. obviously, but this is a tower I've made out of popsicle sticks. Yeah. So in order to max it out, I've already built a large shaker table. Come on. This is my large shaker table. So it's got basketballs underneath as the four balls, but it works exactly the same. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, so what kind of tower should we make for the shaker table? If we want something tall, then we'll reinforce it a couple spots. But the true test, it's got to have some sort of weight on top so that it will mimic the weight that would be on a real tower. Right, so maybe I could get a plastic bin and I'll just put some sandbags for weight inside. That would be perfect. And then balls, so that when it falls over, the balls will go everywhere. That would be perfect. OK, great. We shake off. Whoa. I don't know. I think we should just get off. Another thing that happens during an earthquake is soil liquefaction. Liquefaction means something turns to liquid. In this case, the very ground you might be standing on. Here's how you can experiment with soil liquefaction. All you need is a plastic container and some water, not very much, barely enough to cover the bottom of the container because what you're gonna put in next is sand. And you wanna put it in there and spread it around. Just add enough sand so it just starts to turn dry on the very last layer. So here is a house that I'm going to put on top. And now I will simulate an earthquake. The water rises up and it sort of turns to liquid, soil liquefaction. And heavy things like houses and cars, they tend to sink like that. And then the soil rehardens and everybody's houses are stuck in the mud. Now, let's max it out. This is a giant tub of sand and water, and this is a vibrating platform that will simulate an earthquake. Now, as you can see, this sand is totally solid. I can jump all around on this sand, no problem. But when I turn on the vibrating table and simulate an earthquake, things will change. The vibrations bring the water below the sand to the surface and cause the sand particles to separate. What was solid now turns to liquid in my simulated earthquake, and I start to sink. I'm up to my shins! And there you go, soil liquefaction! Hey, look at that. It's totally solid. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Soil liquefaction! I'm totally... Uh-oh. You know what I realized? When it stops vibrating, it really becomes solid again. And it's very tough to... Well, there, there you go. Soil liquefaction. I'm, uh... I'm really kind of stuck in here. I... So Anne and I have made a large shaker table. Now it's just a matter of designing a building. We use lumber and cut it up, use screws to attach it all together, put a platform on top for a weight, and attach it securely to our shaker table. The building is super simple, just four corners and a few planks around the outside. No structure in the middle. And finally, the big heavy weight on the top. There. We attach a pole to the shaker table so we can shake from a safe distance and try it out. Okay, very slow. Forward. Let's see how much shaking it can stand with our shakeometer. Okay. Uh, that seems to be okay. Just kidding. Oh, oh no. Oh no! We barely 
start to shake our tower before it collapses. Oh, that didn't really last very long, did it? It completely folded up on itself. Uh, what do we do to fix this, make it better? I think the easiest thing we can do is to use thicker wood. It'll make it less wobbly. Okay, sure, let's make another one. Bye, Bye folks. We do have lots of wood, that's a good thing. Ann and I are trying small improvements every time. There. Our last building used thinner pieces of wood. Now we're using thicker wood, which we think will help keep the weight at the top from collapsing the building. Everything else about the design of our building is the same. We put the weight on top and fix our pole and we're good to go. All right, you ready? Problem. Okay. Turn the creek. But it recovers. You can yeah. see it lean and then it comes back and it, re and it resets. Definitely doing better than the last one. Oh, no. I'm impressed. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> it definitely did better than the first one. It did better than the first one. And the thicker wood definitely helped. But it was really starting to turn. I think on the next one, we need some platforms in the center to help strengthen it even more. Earthquake Building 3.0. Thicker wood this time, but with platforms in the middle. So we're gonna see how well this version works with these middle parts that'll hopefully reinforce. And they're just like the floors of a building. Okay, well, let's find out if it's gonna make any difference. Starting to wobble a little, but it looks pretty good. As soon as we start shaking, it's really obvious this building is more solid. Uh-oh, starting to creak. Oh, it's really starting to creak. The platforms in the middle really seem to improve the structure. You can see it bend all the way over and still recover. But still, it wasn't long before... Really starting to lean. <laughs> wow, the extra pieces really kind of made it more impressive. It definitely lasted a lot longer than the other two. It did, but here's what I'm wondering. Are we going in the wrong direction? What do you mean? Well, because if it's really solid, it resists the change. Okay, I see where you're going with this. So if we make it flexible, it can resist the shaking of an earthquake. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. My tuna fish and meatball sub soup is coming along quite nicely, but what will we have for dessert? I know. How about earthquake buildings? Ha <laughs> ha! It's a building made out of wafer cookies. But the people on Vanilla Street built in the gelatin neighborhood. And the people on Chocolate Street built in the crispy rice part of town. Exciting. Now, here comes the earthquake. Oh no! Oh, it's shaking! Oh! The shaking has come and gone for the people on Chocolate Avenue, and their building is still standing. Now, let's take a look over here on Vanilla Street, and here comes an earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, dear! Looks like the people on Vanilla Street are going to have to rebuild their building because it's all fallen over and being eaten. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Buildings can be built the same way, but the kind of soil they sit on make a large difference if there's an earthquake. Shaky, wiggly soil or solid, non-moving soil. So there you go, an experiment you can try at home. Delicious. Well, I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Science. Mm, now to try my soup. Size barometer in 60 seconds. Learning how to predict and measure earthquakes is an important branch of science. The Earth is shaking, but which way did the earthquake come from? It's all about measuring the vibrations, and to do that, you need a seismometer. All you need is a ball, some paper cups, some modeling clay, a pencil, and science tape, which is the same thing as invisible tape, except I use this tape for science. First, take your pencil and stick it straight down into the modeling clay. Then, you take your cups and you arrange them in a circle and tape the cups down. And that goes right in the middle, just like that. Now, what you do is you take the ball and you carefully balance it on the pencil. Now you have created a seismometer. It will tell you what direction an earthquake came from. Watch, I will be the earthquake. Ready? Did you see that? The ball fell into the cup facing the direction 
that I hit the table. And now I'm gonna hit the table from over here. Yep, it fell in the direction that I hit the table. Okay, let's try from over here. There you go, your very own seismometer that you can use to measure earthquakes that you create on the table. Back to our earthquake building. Ann and I tried a few different designs and they each got a little better. But now we're wondering what would happen if we built the tower out of very flexible material. We used some plastic tubing and attached the wood with bungee cords, which are like big elastics. Wow, okay, so looks good. So let's test it. Okay. And sure enough, when we start shaking it, the tower holds up to as much shaking as we can give it. Wait. What? Aren't we missing something? Oh. Yeah, we're missing the weight at the top. Of course. So I think we need to try it again. So we add the weight to the top, and then everything changes. Oh, oh no. Look at it twist. Oh, dear. It twisted. A flexible tower is great until you try to put a weight at the top. And then it just seems <laughs> really unstable. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Oh. Look at that. It's totally bent. It didn't break at all. It just fell over. Yeah, it couldn't even support the weight. So it was almost too flexible. So I guess we should go back to a more rigid design. Mm -hmm. But what if we change the shape a little bit? Because mm -hmm. you know what I was thinking. This is a very stable shape. Mm -hmm. Triangle, because triangles are really strong. What about um, we, we make an X? Like a triangle within a triangle. Triangle, and then triangle. So that really reinforces all of the shaking, like all of the motion. We'll never know until we try. All right. Uh-oh. I have all my friends coming over, and I don't have a table. But that's OK. I will make a table using my friends. This is an awesome experiment you can do with four friends. Come on in, science friends. I've got Sam and Dylan and Polly here to help me. So everybody turn to your left and sit sideways on the chair and then scooch the chairs into the middle. And then everybody leans back onto the knees of the other person. And then, this is why I said you need four friends, because you need the fifth person to remove the chairs! Whoa. The reason why this works is because everybody's weight is being supported on the legs of the person next to them. Okay, we're gonna rotate in a circle, everybody. Okay, ready? Here we go, rotating, R rotating. Oh, oh, science table. Ooh, hey, we're pretty good at this. Okay. Uh oh. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> so there you go. Awesome way to make a table using your friends. Well done. Well done. Science. Here's an experiment you can do to impress the adults in your house. You need three glasses, all of equal height, and three knives, not sharp knives, the dull knives you use, maybe the ones you use at dinner time. Take your three knives and put them in a triangle, all equally spaced out. Then move the knives together to make a little triangle, right like that. Then what you want to do is you want to carefully arrange the knives so each knife is going above one knife and below another knife. So there we go. Then you want to take this careful pattern that you created and you want to put it on top of your three glasses. One where each handle of the knives are gonna be. And if you place it carefully, and you've done the over-unders correctly, it will stay up. Pretty amazing, the knives support their own weight. But they don't just support their own weight, they can support a lot more weight too. Pretty amazing, right? This is a great experiment. It's also something really interesting that we can max out. Come on. And here you go, the maxed out knife balance. I've got three pieces of lumber and three barrels, and as you can see, the pattern is exactly the same. Under, over, under, over, under, over. Ha ha. So, the question is, how much faith do I have in science? Ah, it totally supports my weight. I know it's going to work because I know that a two by four, which is the kind of lumber I'm using, can hold up my weight. So that means the structure can support me. <laughs> Science!
You know what the cool thing is? The cool thing is that even though it's holding me up, each one of these pieces of wood is only up because it's supported by the others. You pull one out and it all falls apart. Ann and I have tried solid towers and flexible towers, and nothing has worked fantastically yet with a big weight on the top. Having a big weight on the top of our tower means we need something that will resist the movement of that weight. So now we're going to start with a triangle. Unlike a rectangle, triangles are very stable. A wider base keeps the structure from swaying too much. And cross braces in the middle mean that there are other triangles within our triangle, all the better to resist movement. Thank you. After Ann and I built our tower, we added the weight to the top, secured it to the base, and tried it out. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Looking good. No problem. It's not twisting. It's, it's not, not even leaning. Not even creaking. No, it looks really good. Wow, this one is really solid. As you can see, this tower is way more solid than our square tower or the flexible tower. Okay, look at that. Like, if that's not an earthquake, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at the way the ground is moving. I don't know if we can shake it much more than this. Faster. Our triangular tower is up past a level of shaking that made the other towers collapse. Now it's time to max out the shaking. There's only one level of shaking that we can do above this. What's that? We shake from either side. We give it all we have. The floor was bouncing from side to side, the tower was tilting and was totally solid. It's still holding strong. In fact, Anne and I wore out before the building showed any signs of falling over. I think we've done it. Woo! Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Science Max experiments at large earthquake proof building. I mean, come on. That was impressive. I like it. Ha, 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 ha!